Today we will see complete crude operations using JavaScript, starting from this demo where we are performing all crude operations. The design won't be the focus of this video as, as much as understanding and applying crude operations will be. That being said, we will quickly write HTML and CSS and then do a detailed JavaScript for creating, reading, updating, and deleting info from this random booking form. As you can see how we are adding or creating, updating, reading, and deleting info in this demo. Before we get to the code, let's quickly go over what crude actually means and why we need it. Crude is a system that allows us to manage data in almost any application, from to-do lists and booking systems to social media apps. Crude is an acronym for the four fundamental operations create, read, update, and delete. Create operation lets users add new data to the system. This operation saves user input typically by storing it in a database or memory. While the read operation lets users view existing data, like loading and displaying saved bookings or tasks. Every time users open or refresh the app, they are reading data from storage. For update operation, it lets users modify existing data. For instance, if someone needs to change the name on a booking, they can edit it and save the updated information. Finally, delete operation allows users to remove data from the system. This can be as simple as clicking a delete button to remove an item permanently. Let's start with the HTML structure for our crude application. We have a main container split into two sections. On the left, there's a bookings table where all entries will be displayed, and on the right, we will have our booking form where users can add new entries. Within the left section, the table structure includes headers for name, email, date, and actions. This is where the bookings will be listed and the edit or delete actions will be available. Now, moving to the right side, we have the booking form. This form includes labeled input fields for full name, email address, and booking date, each with floating labels for a cleaner look. We are going for the basic design so we will understand everything, which means we will only have three input fields to see how crude works. We also can't be too boring so we will add some label animation for fashion purposes. We will also keep autocomplete off so as to not expose our email. By the way, while we are writing these input groups, if you want to see more cute web development content like this then you need to subscribe to my channel and turn on a notification bell. There's also a submit button styled with a class called primary btn to make it visually distinct from the other button since in the demo you can see the delete modal having two buttons. Finally, I've included a hidden delete confirmation modal at the bottom. This modal will only appear when users want to delete an entry, adding an extra layer of user control to avoid accidental deletions. In this modal, we will ask nicely if you want to make the best decision of your life by deleting your life problems. I can be really dramatic sometimes. This is where we have to buttons and obviously, we will add functionality to these buttons using JavaScript. Next, let's dive into the CSS to polish up the design with some makeup. Alright, now on to the CSS. Here, we'll transform our plain HTML into a sleek, modern layout. Starting with body, we add a linear gradient background and center everything with Flexbox for a balanced look meaning so it looks good enough to basically show this in a YouTube video. We also have a lot of font because why not? Initially the color was white but then it didn't look cool with the light blue gradient we have so I simply changed it to black. In container class that contains everything, we will use flex display to arrange the booking list and form side by side with some gap to keep them separated. For both left and right sections, we add a frosted glass effect to give it glass morphic effect using a semi-transparent background and a blur filter, giving it a modern look because otherwise this will look too serious. In my personal opinion, make background color white with less opacity and then add backdrop filter blur to give it a frosted look is the best way to go with glass morphic layout. 
Oh, and also Lightbox Shadow is a chef's kiss to these frosted looks. Remember the booking form and bookings heading? Well, that is going to have a font size and margin bottom for fashion purposes. For the table in our booking list, first, we set the table to 100% width so it fills the container evenly, and we collapse borders to create a seamless grid effect. This makes each cell visually connected, giving it a cleaner appearance. We are setting a max width of 7.5 rem for both TH and TD to keep columns uniform. With padding of 10 pixels, the content has some space, while text is aligned center. Borders on the bottom and right use a light white color for a subtle grid effect. For longer text, we use word wrap to break word and white space to normal to keep everything contained within cells. In TH, we add a light blue background for contrast and bold the font to make titles stand out. Again, for looking good in a YouTube video, we added to shades of color to odd and even rows of booking info that is T-Body TR. Let's copy paste and make it even and then simply change the opacity to have different shades of color. Let's have a third shade of same color for hover. It's always fun to play with these shades to have consistency in colors for the web page while also having different shades. We will see what we created so far right after CSS. Now let's move on to the right side where we have the input fields to enter data, edit data, and submit data. Form card creates the form's container style with a semi-transparent white background to give a glass-like effect. Padding of 30 pixels adds spacing, and a border radius of 8 pixels gives rounded corners. A subtle shadow adds depth, while animation fade and smoothly fades in the card when it loads. Here, inputs have 95% width and center alignment, with padding for comfortable typing. Removing borders and adding a slight rounded look with border radius of 6 pixels make the inputs blend in. The background enhances the glassy feel, and the transition makes the background color change smoothly on focus. We also keep transitions in everything to change colors and stuff a little slowly and smoothly. When an input is focused, the background lightens to another shade of white color for visual feedback. We remove outlines and add a shadow glow to highlight active fields. For input groups containing input fields and labels, we position each input group relatively and sets a margin bottom of 1.5 rem to space out the form fields. For labels within these input groups, we have positioned absolutely inside input fields to float as placeholders. Transitions on all three seconds create smooth label movements. The labels are clickable since we disabled pointer events. We also have positioned labels at top of 30% within input groups for initial placement since we are animating these labels. To add some label animation, when the input is focused or has content, the label moves up with slight animation and shrinks with font size of 0.8 rem. Bold font weight, gray color, and a slightly rounded background make labels clearly visible above the input. It's basic animation, but it does look good I hope. And of course this animation will happen in 3 seconds time frame as styled earlier when we were writing CSS for labels itself. Now on to the buttons we have and the edit delete buttons we will create in JavaScript. BTN styles buttons with a fixed size of 5 rem width and 2 rem height, rounded corners, and pointer cursor for interactivity. Transitions for transform and shadow add smooth scaling and shadow effects on hover. Primary BTN gives the button a gradient background from blue to cyan and our lovely box shadow that we add in everything for a modern effect. Obviously, we didn't forget to add the hover effect on these primary BTN where on hover, the button slightly scales up and shadow deepens for an interactive look. Oh, and I forgot to create the fade in animation with opacity that we called inform card. It defines a simple fade in animation from opacity 0 to 1 for a smooth initial appearance effect. 
Finally, for the modal class, position fixed with width and height of 100% centers it across the screen, while we create a semi-transparent overlay. Flexbox aligns modal content perfectly in the center. I think I am in love with Flexbox, it's everywhere. The modal content class uses a white background, padding, rounded corners, and a shadow to make it pop. We center the text with a dark gray color for contrast. I tried to make this entire video in web design as professional as possible and tried to be serious as much as I can so I hope you guys like it. For text we added some margin below. This is what we have so far after CSS but I just realized I forgot to make everything capitalized. Let me add text transform capitalized in body. Now it looks better right? Let's hope so. Except for this lowercase button, but I'm too lazy to change it so let's dive into the JavaScript instead. In JavaScript we will cover every part of the code step by step, including how we handle data storage, display, and user interactions for adding, editing, and deleting bookings. We define some important elements like submit booking BTN to add or edit bookings, booking list to display them, and elements for the delete confirmation modal like delete modal, confirm delete BTN, and cancel delete BTN. Basically we are getting everything we need to add crude functionality like ingredients in a market for a great recipe. This is where we are calling all delete modal related stuff. It's gonna take a while to call every element needed from HTML, so in the meantime please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also if you are interested in my other content like e-commerce website, portfolio, or restaurant website then check them out from the link in the description. Next, we have two key variables bookings, an array for storing all booking entries, an edit index and delete index to track which entries we are editing or deleting. This setup will make it easier to perform our crude operations. In loading and saving bookings, we start with two critical functions load bookings and save bookings. Load bookings function checks if any bookings are stored in local storage. If stored data exists, it loads it into the bookings array and calls render bookings function to display it. This function ensures that data persists even after the page is refreshed by retrieving it from local storage meaning it's the read part of the crude. Now we also need to save these booking in the first place to the local storage so save bookings function converts the bookings array to JSON and saves it in local storage. Its purpose is to keep data updated in local storage whenever changes like add, update, delete are made to bookings preserving them across page reloads. Now render bookings function clears the current rows in the booking list table to avoid duplicate entries. It then iterates over each booking in bookings, creating a new row with the name, email, booking date, and action buttons edit and delete. Each button includes a data index attribute, allowing us to identify which booking is associated with the button. The purpose of this render bookings function is to dynamically populates the table with the latest booking data each time it's called meaning it's creating the column names that we saw in the demo with booking data. Notice the ID name is same as in the input group. This is where we are creating the edit and delete buttons in the booking data that will only show when there is actual data added to the bookings on the left side. Also notice we are using data index attribute in this button that we are creating in JavaScript along with BTN and primary BTN classes that we created in CSS. At the end we just need to append this in the row. Clear form method as the name suggests has the purpose to clear the form after adding or editing a booking to prepare for new input that can be added basically emptying the input fields. Clear form function resets the form inputs and its values for name, mail, and booking date. I am gonna keep copy pasting the booking date from HTML so as to not mess with the code, it's superstitious at this point to copy paste everything. Anyways, we also resets edit index to minus 1, signifying that the user is no longer editing an entry. Now we are in the phase of adding or editing a booking. 
Submit booking BTN on click retrieves and trims values from the form fields of name, email, and booking date. Let me just not create a simple way to call these name, email, and booking date everywhere because when I did it once, it messed up the code. So if code is working don't play games with it ever that's my rule. So now you have to bear it with me, besides the code looks cleaner this way. Anyways, the main the purpose of this part is to manage editing new bookings and updating existing ones using the same form, based on the edit index value. For that, it will check if the fields are filled in which case if edit index is minus 1, the form is in add mode. The new booking object of name, email and booking date is pushed to bookings. For once I am even commenting the stuff in JavaScript how very nice of me to remember doing that, if only I remember it when I actually need to comment stuff. Anyways, if edit index is not minus 1, the form is in edit mode, and the booking at edit index is updated with the new values. At the end, we call save bookings, render bookings, and clear form functions to save changes, update the table, and reset the form. Now it's time to handle the click events in the booking list. Booking list on click listens for clicks on the booking list table. Its purpose is to allow users to trigger delete or edit actions directly from the table rows, identifying entries by their data index. If the clicked element has the delete BTN class, it sets delete index to the corresponding data index and displays the delete modal dialog which we will deal with later on in JavaScript. We are setting up the delete modal from display none that we styled in CSS to display flex at clicking of delete button. In other case, if the clicked element has the edit btn class, it retrieves the booking data at the clicked index, fills the form with this data, and sets edit index to this index for editing. For editing I wanted to have another modal but then I realized it won't look as cool as having these input fields having data and being changed and updated, it's more logical and professional to me. I hope you like this more than having editing modal. Oops I forgot to copy paste booking date, but let's hope for the best. Now for the delete modal handling where confirm delete btn on click removes the booking at delete index from bookings. Calls save bookings method and render bookings method to update local storage and the displayed list. Afterwards we also hides the delete modal dialog. When cancel delete btn on click happens, it closes the delete modal without deleting anything and resets delete index to minus 1. At the end, load bookings runs on page load to populate the booking list from local storage. Let's see the final outcome and ensure we are not missing anything. I won't speed up this part of the video so you guys can fully witness the complete crude operation that we created and now have the rights to gloat about it. I guess it's time to stop my blabbering and let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. I guess that kills our gloating with the greater than sign in the delete modal rather than question mark. Let me fix it real quick in HTML. Let me add data and reload the page to show you guys how the data remains still. If you have been dealing with my dead humor for 19 minutes straight then, 